welcome to or welcome back to the final episode of my Berlin Marathon training series. My name is Marcus Brown. I'm here in Berlin to run the Berlin Marathon. I've got 24 hours to go before I'm here on these streets. My legs feel good. I've had the taper week. It's always strange when you've not run for a few days after you've been running such a big mileage, but I'm feeling good. For me, I think the marathon training is really the, the hardest bit. The race, I think, is the, the fun bit. You know, that's the bit where you get to put everything out, out there. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be tough. I know it's going to be tough, but this is what we live for, this is what we enjoy. I want to beat my, my PB of 256, but my training suggests I can go faster. But whatever the marathon gods give me on the day, I'll take it. So uh, hopefully I'm here talking later with a big shiny PB. Because when I shoot his buckets, put that man in a coffin. Take this man to the moon, put this man in the rockets. Because I'm out of this world, uh, and I got a mountain to climb. Uh, they say I'm out of my mind, because uh, I want the whole of the pie. But you know we never deny it, I'm on a diet. But I've been silent, I've been not working, but I've been quiet. What is the purpose when I resurface, sing to the choir? Man, I'm talking greatness. I stood that as an understatement. I feel back and I run the bases. I look back, but can't contain it. So I ran 2.59 and it was a really tough race. I was really doing really well up to 11K, but I started feeling a little bit sick. From 11K onwards, it was a real fight to the finish. I had to take a pit stop and that lost me a few minutes. And then you go back into the race and then you've got to deal with the kind of what's happening in your mind. You, you, you train for a PB, you know you're in PB shape, but you know that you're not going to PB that day unless you try to run too fast and then you blow up. So that was very uncomfortable. I just had to sit through it and just like, let it kind of fizzle out. And then after it fizzled out, I could be like, cool, all right, what can I do next? I can at least go for sub three. And you know, that was my aim. I just wanted to like finish it my fastest time. A sub three is not an easy thing. I, this is probably you know, my, my proudest one, even though it's my slower sub three, but just because of how south the race went from early on and the emotions that the, the marathon takes you on, just the lows and like, across the finish line and it was definitely a tearful moment so um, yeah, I'm really proud of this moment and yeah, it's my fastest Berlin and what a story to tell my kids when I get back I guess. I was running within that effort and the heart rate was, was consistent in the areas I wanted it to be at so it did t teach me a lot and it actually did give me that bit of comfort where I should be running but after that point basically what happened was like you're in a situation of you try not to chase time but then you don't feel 100%, so your heart rate effort isn't probably matching your pace. So I had to adjust it. The thing with the marathon is that you, if you go too early, then you can blow up. And I knew that I was in that, that space. And I had to tell myself, like, don't, you, you're speeding up. You need to slow it down. Conditions was perfect. The weather was perfect. It wasn't sunny. It picked up towards the end, but that's when I finished. But yeah, weather-wise, it was perfect. There's no wind. And it, obviously it proved it because Elliot ran a world record today. So. It's incredible to watch kind of replays, but yeah, for me, the weather was perfect. Tonight I'm just going to have a break and have a few beers, have something nice. I don't know why I agreed to do this, but I'm doing the London Marathon in about six days, so I want to relive all these amazing emotions, physically and mentally, again. But then afterwards I'm just going to take some time off, chill out. The good thing is I've got the qualifying time for Boston, so I've got that and I'm going to run that next year. The last time I ran that was in 2018, and anyone knows 2018, the weather was just shocking. All runners say this is redemption or whatever, but this is going to be redemption for me. So it sounds like a bad movie title, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to going back to Boston. Anything I say to someone getting into the sport, uh, you know, to keep your love for the sport, don't do back-to-back -back marathons. Just keep going and going. You need to mix it up and do short distances or just run for fun or just take some time off. So I would say for anyone who's new into the sport or even run for a long time, just to make sure that you don't always go from marathon training to marathon training to marathon training because marathon training takes a lot physically and mentally and you know it takes time away from other areas of your life and you should keep running fun you should do other things you can train for shorter distances you can do the mile 5k you can do cross country i think the key thing is to enjoy your running one week later i'm running the london marathon this is mile 21 hosted by run dem crew Are you going to break two hours tomorrow? <laughs> I think that's what everybody wants to know. No, I'm not running tomorrow. I came here to give you more air. It's possible to break two hours Ab in normal position. Absolutely, yes. It's possible, yes. Well, what's your opinion? PB is 3.42. That hopefully I'll try and break tomorrow. What's your target tomorrow? 
What, what's your target? Your t tomorrow is. You want to break 340? I want 340. Okay. <laughs> what's your one piece of advice for the back of the pack runners who run at half your speed? My advice actually is get st hold the starting line, run well, make sure you are trained well, and finish the race. Please finish the race. That's important. What's your one bit of advice to do in the morning before the marathon? Your top tip before we all start? Three hours before you start a marathon, please make sure you, you eat something which can uh, take you far. Get an oatmeal and actually uh, uh, and a banana. As your breakfast and it will take you actually to some, to, to some kilometers. And then you, you are treated well. Okay. I, I think it's a hard question, but uh, marathon starts uh, 30 kilometers. But uh, there is no clean uh, uh, kilometer that you can say I'm feeling actually tired or I'm feeling energetic. It's always, it, 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 it's, it's a journey. Yes. Stick with it. Um, don't change things today or tomorrow. Stick with what's tried and true. Um, and Liz's tips were, were great about staying dry and, and, and believing in yourself. And I'll be honest with you, this has been the most difficult marathon for me to believe in myself because it's been really challenging to get here. And I know all of you have faced challenges, but uh, it's all about the story. It's all about community. It's all about doing this together in one way or another. Um, we've all prepared differently to get here. But go with what you have and believe and uh, just believe that we're going to have a good day out there tomorrow and the weather gods are going to cooperate. Uh, but I'm very excited about you being here and your marathon quests. And uh, I think that um, what I said before about believing in yourself and making sure you have triple knots in your shoelaces. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's going to be wet. Um, and just not trying anything new between now and recently. I think it's the main thing for me is getting your pace right in those first miles. Um, if you mess up those first six miles, it can, you can really pay for it later in the race. So set your race plan, um, understand what your pace, marathon pace looks like in relevance to your fitness. Um, make sure you start your stopwatch when you go under the start gantry and mark it off against the mile markers on the course. Just make sure you're hitting those mile markers at not too fast a pace, because if you're rested, you're tapered, you're excited, it's so easy to run too quickly in those first few miles, and it should feel easy. No matter what level of running you are, those first few miles should feel very easy. And if you're breathing too hard and you're struggling in the first half of the marathon, slow down. <laughs> so I'm usually used to like waking up smashing a banana and getting out to the course. Do you guys have any advice for starting so late uh, in a race? I think again, go with what's normal for you. Uh, this is a relatively late start, but way back when, when I was at the height of my career, the Boston Marathon started at 12 noon, and that was really hard to figure out. I think most of us are gonna be up very early. Again, most importantly, don't try something new. Bananas, for me, uh, maybe a bagel or toast with jam. I stay away from dairy. Um, you need to have something in your stomach to, to gnaw on. And um, just keep it simple, keep it comfortable, and again, nothing new, but make sure you eat something. And small nibbles along the way to the start is also a good idea. I think it's thinking about the practicalities of your hotel as well. So what time they start their <coughs> breakfast, what time you're going to be leave, leaving. Um, I used to delay my breakfast until kind of three hours before the start. But if that's not, you might be able to take something from breakfast and wrap it up and take it with you if the timings don't work out. Um, or have something in, in at breakfast and then something to, like Joan said, to take with you so you can eat it at the right time before you start. So. You know, two to three hours typically people eat before and then leave that time so you don't get, you know, have time for it to digest a bit and you don't get a stitch. And something quite light for me, I never used to stay away from fibre because it never reacted well. Um, so porridge was a no-no for me on race day. Um, just toast and jam 
I used to like a bit of cake. Um, <laughs> um, so, you know, you just need to replenish those liver glycogens before you get to going. Um, so, yeah. This is from the article, The Marathon Doesn't Owe You Anything by Peter Bromka. The link is in the caption if you want to read the full article. Racing 26.2 miles will break you, and that's the point, to see where you stand when you're exposed. This is you today. Just like that, it's over. Sub three, here we go. Thank you. 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 Turns out it wasn't the distance or the time, the two are simply tools you use to find something in yourself. On the Richter scale of life, there may not be many quakes as large as weddings, births or deaths, but we endeavour to feel something so indelibly that it won't wash away as the waves of time crash against our memory. Maybe that's why we cry at marathon finish lines, not for good or for bad, but for the honesty of the moment as we stand on that day. The marathon doesn't owe you anything, which makes it the perfect vessel in which to pour your everything. <laughs> <laughs>